kind of go over the scientific method and like how you can apply that not only in science but like to problem solve. And so I'm going to give you a scenario first. So it's a really hot day, you're outside, and you bring out a can of, name a soda. Coca-Cola. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm really stressed and worried. Okay, so it's a can of Coca-Cola and it's cold. It's been in the fridge and you took it out, so you're sitting on your porch, and then you go back inside for like five minutes, you come out and it's like super warm and it's nasty, right? So the problem is what? What do you guys think the problem is? That Coca-Cola is gross. <laughs> so why is it gross? Because we left it out in the sun. Mm -hmm, so it got warm, right? Yeah. So then the first step would be you observe that your can of soda got really warm and nasty. And so the question would be, what can we do to keep it cold? You know? So when you take it out of the fridge and you go outside, you don't have to worry about it getting warm like in five minutes. So number one would be the observation. And it's good to have like an idea of what kind of question you want to ask, but it doesn't have to be completely specific. So, observation, and then second is research. So what types of things do you think you would have to research in order to kind of figure this out? Like, how would you approach this? Um, you could look on the internet. Right, you can look on the internet, you could look in books, ask teachers and whatnot, just to figure out like what kind of materials do people use to keep their cans cold, right? Mm -hmm. So like, can you guys just like name materials off of your head? It could be like cardboard, paper, styrofoam, styrofoam, styrofoam. Um, what else? I mean, I was thinking ice cubes, but <laughs> <laughs> um, totally valid. I just don't know how you would make like a cup holder. Yeah. Ice <laughs> but so let's go with styrofoam. Oh, they have those cups that have like those ice particle looking things in them, though. What are those things? Oh, is that just like a special kind of plastic? Yeah. yeah so you want to use styrofoam and then plastic. plastic. Yeah. Um, and then let's just stick with those two, and then we'll have a, I'll, I'll go into that later, we control, but we'll go into that later. Okay, so there, you're taking your observation, like your outside knowledge and whatever, and you're taking your research, and then you're going to make a hypothesis. So do you guys know what it means to hypothesize? Is that like making an educated guess? Educated guess. Yeah. Exactly. So then you're taking whatever you learned from these two steps, and you're applying it to this. And usually it'll be in the form of an if and then, then statement. Um, um, if I were to construct one for this specific scenario, it would be if I wrap my Coke can in styrofoam, then it will take longer for the drink to get warmer. So then if and then statement. And so the next step would be to approach this, and you're going to create an experiment. And an experiment has a lot of different elements to it, um, going from like the control, the independent variable, the dependent variable, but we can go over that later. But uh, basically, okay, so how would you guys approach this? Like, what would you, what kind of materials would you have? Or, like, just very simply. So we have styrofoam, um, plastic, and we need Coke cans, right? Mm -hmm. So then how would you guys, like, just kind of, you know, just talk it out. Like, how would you go about this? I would measure, I would measure the initial temperature of, mm -hmm. say, like, three different cans of Coke and then wrap them in different materials. Right. Maybe have one without anything. Mm -hmm. so and then control, leave right? them, yeah. Awesome. And then leave them in the sun for the same amount of time and mm -hmm. measure the final temperature mm -hmm. and see whichever one kept the coat the coldest. That is perfect. <laughs> I'm in the gradient. The gradient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll do grammar like another time. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, exactly. So then um, you would record like all the measurements, like temperatures and then what kind of material you wrapped it in and that would go into like a data table mm -hmm. and like when you are conducting the experiment you want to make sure to take not only the quantitative data like the temperature like the numbers but also qualitative so like um, I don't know just you describing the procedure so that it's easier for someone else to read it and like understand it and then fifth would be data So data analysis, what do you guys think this is? Analyzing the <laughs> results of your experiment? Exactly. So then you're just taking whatever numbers and whatever observations you made and just kind of thinking about it and how it applies to whatever other steps you guys took. And then the last one would be conclusion. And this ties back and basically you're trying to answer whatever question you asked in step three or one, the hypothesis. Was your hypothesis correct? Was it incorrect? Um, and also, 
good thing to know is that if you think you made errors, say like you were holding onto the cookie for really long and maybe your hand warmed it up for that, you'd want to include that here just so that um, if there were errors that you're taking it into account. Okay? And so at the end, you would have um, an answer, not answer, like whether your hypothesis was correct or not, and the solution to your overall problem, and that is how we can apply the scientific method. Cool.